Good morning, everybody. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. And thank God for another day among the land of living. We're living in end time days, that's for sure. And we're living in exciting times. And, you know, we can see things happening most rapidly. But we're going to, you know, we want to stay focused. We want to, we're children of light. We're not children of darkness. We're of the light. And so we want to pay attention to what's going on and continue to grow in grace and knowledge. Continue to, you know, read your word. Continue to focus on Jesus and focus on the word and, and you know, everything you do. Uh, just strive to do it in a way that honors God. We want to be found um, working for the Lord. We want to we want to be found, um, you know, doing the things of God. Scripture says, "Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves." That's in James chapter two and twenty, I believe. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, it's one thing to read your Bible and to hear truth. It's another thing to apply it to your life. And when you apply it to your life, the Lord will bless you. And you will, um, you'll grow spiritually. And that's, it's very important that you grow. It's one thing to be born again and to get saved. And, um, you know, when you get saved, you're a new creature in Christ. You're born again. But God wants you to grow. You're a baby in Christ, but he wants us to grow spiritually into mature adults where we can help um, lead others to Christ also. So that scripture is in 2 and, what is it? James chapter 2. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, chapter 1 verse 22 of James. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So we want to make sure we're reading the word and we're applying it to our life. Amen. We're going to pick up back in St. John. We're in St. John chapter 5 where we left off a few days ago. In my last video, I I thought I was going to pick up here, but I got on something else and ended up talking about something else. But we're back in the book of St. John. We're going to pick up at verse 19 chapter 5 verse 19 we want to open in a word of prayer first father in jesus name we thank you for this day we thank you for your goodness and mercy and we pray that you be with us as we get into the word help us to learn something lord in jesus name amen all right well i got a co-worker coming up here right as i'm getting started and i don't okay good i think he's going to stay back there he might come up to the truck, and I might have to talk to him for a minute, but that's okay. I'll, I'll talk to him for a minute, let him know what I'm doing, and then he'll be on his way if it comes to that. So let's get into it. We're in chapter 5 of St. John, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also do the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. See, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. And that he's talking about the resurrection when he says this. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, see, for as the Father raises up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. And this is speaking of the resurrection and the rapture, but it's also speaking of, when he says quicken, he's speaking of salvation. When you go over to Ephesians chapter 2, I want to read this really fast. Ephesians ch chapter 2, and before I read that, I want to read, um, let's read another scripture in Romans chapter 5. It says, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's a wonderful scripture. Um, it's in Romans chapter 5. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay. Let's see. I just read it a little bit earlier. I looked for it, and it says... It speaks on how while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Okay. And now I'm not able to find it. Go figure. That's okay. I'm going to find it here. Let's see. Wow. Where did it go? Let's see here. But God committed his love toward us in that well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's uh, chapter 5, verse 8 of Romans. But God. Okay. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. While we were yet sinners, Christ came into the world and he died for the sins of all mankind. And he, you know, he paid our sin debt in full. And because of what he did for us, we can be saved. We can be born again. We can have eternal life. We can have the gift of salvation. That's what it's speaking of when it speaks of um, us being quickened by Jesus. See, God the Father, he, the resurrection is going to happen in the future where the dead in Christ are going to be raised. You can read about it in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. It says how the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible, and that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet them. And it's speaking of the resurrection. It's in the chap chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. But it also says here, Okay, let me read that real quick. Chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians says, 4 and 13, But I would not have you ignorant to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, this is verse 15, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So when the Lord comes, the dead in Christ, said, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. The Lord's going to come back, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's going to come in the clouds and he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. So that's speaking of this portion here that says how, um, let me get back to it in St. John. <clears throat> We're speaking of the resurrection. John 5 in verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him great works, greater works than these, that ye marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, that's speaking of the future resurrection and rapture, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. And when you read over here in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, I want to show you this. It's actually Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So we know that we were yet sinners. We were yet in sin. We were disobedient and we were doing these, you know, the wrong thing, serving false gods. Work, we were committing acts of, of sin, the works of the flesh. We did a lot of bad stuff before we got saved. But when you hear the gospel message and you receive it, 
you put your faith and trust in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the finished work at the cross, when you trust in Jesus, the same way you would trust in a parachute to save your life from when you're falling out of the sky, out of an airplane or something, you put that parachute on to save you and you put your trust in that parachute. Well, it's the same thing. When you believe the gospel message and you place all your trust, you transfer your trust to the Savior, you're saved, you're born again at that point, and that's what it's saying here. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2 and 1, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. See, we walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. So we were not always saved. It's so important to understand that. You know, never judge a person. You know, um, we were yet at one point in bad shape ourselves. But after, after we heard the gospel message, we heard the good news that Jesus had paid our sin debt in full and we put our trust in it all of our faith and trust in Jesus and what he did for us at the cross. We were born again and we were quickened. See, to be quickened is to be made alive. We were dead in trespasses of sins. We were, we were dead. We were on our way to hell. We were, um, you know, we were on our way to serving that death sentence, that eternal death sentence. But, but we were quickened. The moment that we placed all of our faith and trust in Jesus, we were quickened, we were made alive spiritually, and we were born again. And thank God for Jesus, because while we were yet sinners, Christ came and he died for us, that we could have an opportunity to be saved. And, you know, never forget what Jesus has done for you. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. And that's the bottom line. Nothing can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus. Um, water can't wash your sins away. You know, good works can't wash them away. It all points to the cross and what Jesus did for us at the cross. At the cross, um, he he was, you know, he was tortured. He was he was beaten. He was spit upon. You know, they mocked him. They crucified him. They put crown of thorns on his head. I mean, he took upon a, a, upon himself. The punishment that you and I deserve. He took upon himself the wrath that we would have that we would have to um, suffer. He took it, and so that's why now we don't have to we don't have to um, have that wrath placed upon us that we so much deserve because Jesus he took it upon himself, and so never forget. What Jesus has done for you and I, amen. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus that washes away sins and gives us the gift of eternal life. So thank God for Jesus. Okay, let's get back to here. Uh, John, we're in chapter 5 at verse 23, uh, 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Scripture says in 20, I believe it's 14 and 6 of St. John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you don't place your faith and trust in Jesus, if you don't love Jesus, if you don't go through Jesus, you won't, go to, you won't make it to the Father. You must go through Jesus to get to the Father. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. That's found in St. John chapter 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You will not inherit eternal life unless you go through Jesus Christ and what he did for you. He is the way. He is the only way. 4 and 12 of Acts says, Neither is there any other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, but the name of Jesus. Amen. So verse 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Let me read that one again, because that's a golden nugget. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him, so the word is the true, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, okay, and believes on him that sent me. See, God sent the Son, he has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but, <coughs> excuse me, but is passed from death to life. So verse 25 says, verily, verily, I send you, I got to get a little cough drop here. I got a little bit of a cough. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And this is speaking of the resurrection that what we just read in verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that sh hear shall live. Excuse me, that's, that's, that's speaking of... Um, salvation that's uh, speaking of the gift of salvation if you believe on the name of jesus if you believe on the one that god has sent you will be saved you will have everlasting life believe and place your faith and trust in jesus christ the one who god sent to be the savior of the world for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself verse 27 and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Amen. The scripture says over there in Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, I'm going to read this really fast. Philippians chapter 2, I believe. It says, chapter 2, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This speaks of the deity of Christ. He's the second person in the Trinity. Verse 7, in the Godhead. But made himself of no reputation. See, Jesus made himself of no reputation, but and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, this is verse 10, at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, uh, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So you are either going to you're going to bow the knee one way or another. And you can either accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and gain the gift of eternal life, or you're going to bow the knee anyways. And you can serve that death sentence, which you don't want to do. You're either going to serve an eternal death sentence and separation from God in the lake of fire, or you're going to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. Receive the gift that he has given you. He's given you the gift of eternal life because he paid your sin debt in full. And you two, you got two options. You can either receive that gift or you can turn it down and say, I don't want it. You receive it. You spend an eternity in eternal glory. Amen. With God the Father and Jesus the Son, our Lord and Savior, and all the beautiful people, all the beautiful saints, the born-again believers, that's option number one. Or you can re reject that gift and say, I don't want it. And I'd rather serve my eternal death sentence in the lake of fire. There's got to, there's something wrong with you if you choose choice B. There's something wrong with you if you don't want to receive that gift. Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus and nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you just listen to the songs that we sing. You know, and you read the Old Testament, read the New Testament, at all points, 
to Jesus Christ. It all points to what he was going to do in the Old Testament, what he would do. And the New Testament points to what he did do. And he went to the cross and he died for the sins of all mankind. And he paid our sin debt in full. And because of what he did, what he did, you can escape that death sentence and gain the gift of eternal life. It's a, it's very easy. You know, God has made this very simple. Um, it's, it's not rocket science. Man tries to turn it into rocket science. But if you just read the Bible for what it says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's always about believing and place in faith in Jesus Christ for what he did for you and the finished work at the cross. And when you do that, you can be born again and know that you have the gift of eternal life. It's, it's very easy. God made it plain and simple. Okay, but you have a choice. You can either receive that gift or reject it. It's up to you. Uh, verse 25. Let's see. Yeah, let's do verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Amen. They that hear, they'll be born again. When you hear the gospel message and the good news, you can reject it or you can receive it. And those who receive it will be born again. Those who reject it will, um, you know, they won't be born again and they'll, they'll, they'll be damned and they'll, they'll go to hell. They'll go to the lake of fire. I don't wish that upon anyone. I don't want one person on this planet to go to hell. It's a, it's an eternity of torment. It's not somewhere we want to go. For as the father hath life in him, so hath he given the son to have life in himself. Verse 27, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also. Because he is the Son of God, or the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. This is the resurrection, and shall come forth. See, all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And we want to make sure that we're not seeking our own will, but we want to be in the will of God. You know, ask God, let his will be done in your life. Um, he knows what we need. He's our provider, he's our protector, and he'll take care of us, you know, all the way until we reach the shores of eternity. You may not always get what you want, but I believe with all my heart that God will provide for his children. He'll give you the necessities, amen, and you just ask him, Lord, do all you can to live for God, and it's okay to ask for desires, the desires of your heart, but um, if I was you, I would say, Lord, let your will be done in my life and be happy with whatever that is. Um, you know, he knows what's good for you. He has a plan for you. And we just want to make sure that everything we do, it's in the will of the Lord. Verse 31. If I, okay. I think we're going to stop there at verse 30. You know, I just want to say this, um, we're getting close, and everything we see going on in the world, we know that we're getting close to end times, and I believe it's it's upon us, and we could enter into that period of time, that final seven-year period, um, at any time, very soon, and so, you know, live for God. Do everything you know is right. Study the word. Um, you know, it's it's, it's, it's it's our path. It's our light. The scripture says in Psalms 119 and 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. And it says over in 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16, and that, see, 3 and 15 is a big, is a big scripture too. I like to quote 316 of 2 Timothy, but 315 is a good one too. It says, you know, it's so important to read your word. It says here, and that from a child, he was speaking to Timothy. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. It says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the holy scriptures. He says, you've known the scriptures since you were young. You've learned them since you were young. And that from a child, thou hast, you've known the Holy Scriptures. You've studied the word of God. You've gotten it in you. And it says, which are able to make thee wise into salvation. The, the word of God makes you wise into salvation. It shows you the way of salvation. It's as clear as day. It shows us the way of salvation. It tells us about the gospel message, the good news. It's all about Jesus. Okay, so which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. So the Holy Scriptures will, will make you wise unto salvation. You'll know how to be saved. And it's through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So... And two and two of First Peter says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the, milk of the word that you may grow thereby. One of the best ways to grow spiritually is to study your word. Get it in you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's so important to get the word of God in you. It tells you about the past, the present, and the future. It lets us know what's going to happen, and it directs us. It keeps us on that straight path directly to God. And if you stay on that path, keep your focus in, on Jesus. Keep your faith and trust in Jesus and the finished work of the cross. Trust him for your life. Trust him for your protection. Trust him for your salvation. Trust him for your job. Trust him for, to provide for you. Trust him to heal you. Trust him as your doctor. Trust him as your everything. Trust in Jesus for everything and, you know, place your faith in him and not only for salvation, but for everything you do in life and just, <coughs> excuse me, focus on him and, um, you know, he'll bless you down here and you'll enter into eternal glory. The whole goal is to escape that death sentence that we so much have earned and receive the gift of eternal life. Amen. So God bless you. Um, you know, have a wonderful day. We have a crown of righteousness to attain. We have a hell to escape and a heaven to gain. So strive every day uh, to live a life that honors God. You know, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Read your Bible and apply it to your life. Um, use your instruments as instruments of righteousness, you know, with your eyes, watch things that you should watch, you know, with your ears, listen to things you should listen to in a way that honors God. Hands, you know, use your hands for the right thing. Um, don't, don't, you know, your feet, go places you should go. Don't go places you shouldn't go. Um, just everything you do, you know, your mouth and your tongue. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Um, you know, everything you do, uh, show love, show kindness, um, forbearing one another, another. If you have a quarrel with somebody, forgive them as Christ forgave you. You know, we want God to forgive us. We need to forgive others of everything. Unconditional love. And so, love God with all of your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, it's a race. Fight the good fight of faith and just continue on. Hold on. And and we're going to, we have a, we have a crown of righteousness waiting for us. So, God bless you all.
Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, and I love you. And Lord willing, I'll try to do a video tomorrow. But till next time, um, God bless you. And just love God. And, and just make every day a good day. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next time.